All right, so you wanna start a blog but you don't know what to blog about. Okay, so in this video, we're gonna talk about some ways that you can kind of narrow down what you should blog about, what the thing is that you can contribute to the world and the value that you can add. Ultimately, only you can decide this, but I'm gonna ask you some questions to get you thinking that will hopefully help you narrow things down and get you focused on what that thing is that you should be blogging about. All right, so the first question to ask yourself is what do you spend money on? What hobbies do you spend money on? I mean, really just look at your checkbook register or look at your bank statements. See where your money goes, because a lot of times that gives us a really clear indication of what we're actually interested in, you know, because we typically put our money towards things that we're interested in. Now, obviously, we all have bills, and so that part we'll just kind of ignore. But for any disposable income, like where does it go for you? And that's going to tell you something about yourself and something that you're interested in. And whether or not that's actually something you should blog about, you know, I'm not sure there. But the point is, it might generate some ideas for you. All right, question number two is to ask yourself, what types of entertainment do you enjoy consuming? So what type of books do you read? What kind of movies do you watch? Do you watch documentaries? If so, what type of documentaries? And ask yourself if there's anything along those lines that you can and should be writing about. And question number three to be asking yourself is what makes you angry or passionate? Because a lot of people actually find their calling by determining what actually really frustrates them. And so for some health food bloggers, maybe they're just infuriated that there's chemicals and pesticides on our on our food, you know, and so they want to start a blog kind of talking about that. I know for myself, I've been trying to avoid gluten and it can be really difficult to find gluten-free recipes that aren't terrible. And so that's something that kind of makes me angry. You know, I'm not quite there to start a blog about it yet, but point is, is that you want to look for that thing that kind of gets you, fires you up, and then go solve that problem or attempt to solve that problem of that thing that makes you angry. All right, and question number four is to ask your spouse or someone who knows you really, really well what they think you should blog about. And this one is it's kind of counterintuitive, but a lot of times our spouses or people around us who know us very well actually can see this a lot clearer than we can. Because a lot of times we see maybe our skills as not being good enough and we see it just as normal, but somebody on the outside like a spouse can see that we actually do have a little bit more of a gifting here than we realize because to us it's just normal and someone who's really close to you is gonna know the things that fire you up they're gonna know the things that you're really excited about they're gonna know where you spend your time so I found with a lot of our students that just asking their spouse or someone really close to them has given them a lot of really good clues to kind of find an answer to this after you ask yourself these four questions it might generate some ideas you might have some things floating around now the next kind of challenge here for a lot of new New bloggers or want to be bloggers is well I have too many ideas I want to start like five blogs at once generally speaking I do not think it's a good idea to have multiple blogs I have done this I've spent years doing this the bottom line is that it's hard to do two or three or four blogs well and it's a far better thing when you focus all of your energy on one blog and so the ideal situation here is if you do have five topics that you really want to kind of talk about see what the overlap is and see what the common thread is between them and so they might be different topics but if it's the same demographic the same person who would be interested in these two or three topics, you can turn that into a blog. The, the challenge is if you take two or three topics that are completely unrelated, so maybe tennis and sewing and poetry or something like that, like those are just all over the map and putting that into one blog just kind of just doesn't work generally. So if you can find something where you have a couple of these overlapping things that work together where your reader typically is gonna be interested in all three of them or, all, or two of them, then that can work. All right, so another question I get from a lot of new bloggers is how do I tell if this blog niche is gonna be profitable and if there's actually money to be made there? And while I do think this is a good question, I don't think it should be your focus because I've seen far too many bloggers chase a profitable niche that they are just not interested in at all. And it's really hard to sustain that. It's really hard to keep writing about a topic that you could care less about. And on the other hand, I've seen plenty of bloggers take niches that normally weren't very profitable and then turn them into really nice incomes because they're so excited about what they're doing. And that's the beauty of the world that we live in today. There's never been a better time to kind of start a business doing anything that you love. So many different ways to make money from your hobby these days. And it's just an amazing time to live. And one of the funniest examples of this is growing up, you know, I was always told by my parents, quit playing video games. It's a waste of time. It's a waste of time. You can never make any money doing that. They didn't say that that often. But the point is, is that was implied, is that you can never get anywhere with video games. But do you realize that now there are tons and tons of video gamers who are making really nice livings 
using their video game skills. Maybe it's with the YouTube channel, or maybe it's with uh, selling eBooks to uh, teaching other video gamers. This thing that we always thought growing up could never amount to anything now is a very lucrative career path for lots of people who have committed themselves to it. And that's just one example of the potential that's out there. All that to say, I am going to show you a way of how you can kind of get an idea for how profitable a particular blog niche will be. So let's flip over to the screen. We'll take a look at that and I'll show you a little trick here on how to do this. All right, so what you're going to want to do is come over to a website called kwfinder.com. KW stands for keyword. And so what we're going to do here, and there's a, there's a handful of different ways you can do this, but what we're going to do here is just kind of determine the value of some particular keywords related to whatever blogging niche that you're in. And so without having an account, you're only going to be able to use this tool like once or twice, I think. And then once you create a free account, I think you can use it five times a day or something like that. And then obviously, if you want to use it a lot, you can get the paid version. What we'll do is we'll just go right here and enter in the keyword. And so you want to think maybe not like super broad. So if my niche is personal finance, I probably want to go a little bit more narrow to what some of the actual articles might be about. So if I had a camera review blog or something, like I could type in DSLR cameras or something like that. And then we'll just search. All right, and then what we're looking for over here is this CPC. This is average cost per click in Google AdWords. So essentially what this means is that if you wrote an article about this, about Canon DSLR cameras, and as a publisher, you and I could expect to get about 70% of that amount for each click on that ad. All right, and then we'll just try something else. Let's just try golf. So with the golf courses one, we can tell uh, on average they're a little bit higher than they were for the other one. And the other thing about this tool is it actually is a good way to generate some ideas for blog posts. So if you did want to start a blog about golf, like this might actually give you some ideas of things that you could talk. I mean, you could, you know, you could talk about the 10 best golf courses in your state, or you could talk, you know, about golf swing mechanics uh, or the golf swing plane or you know your 10 favorite golf websites or you know there's just a lot of different ideas that you can kind of get out of here um the best golf swing so anyway the point is is that you can kind of generate ideas from this and then what's cool is since this cpc data is here you could also kind of you know if you wanted to sort that by what the most profitable stuff is you know so in general if you're writing an article and this is assuming that you're in the Google AdSense program and using that for ads, which I generally recommend for most new bloggers. Uh, in general, you know, you can kind of rank these and sort these by what's going to be most profitable to write about. So if you're writing about ladies golf apparel and you have a $1.77 CPC, that's going to in general earn you a lot more than if you were writing um, about kids golf clubs that might only earn you 43 cents. Uh, and these are just complete averages, but point is it's like with the Google AdSense program you have these ads on your sidebar and I'll just go ahead and kind of show you what this looks like on my site real quick all right and then over here what you'll see right here this, this is a Google AdSense ad and so if somebody clicks this then I get paid and I get paid a certain amount of money based on that click and so that's where this data from this other website comes in handy because you might get paid, you know, up to 438 or something for somebody who clicks a single time on that ad, which is a really good payout. So like on average, I feel like, you know, most of my clicks probably range in the 30 to 50 cent range, but certain keywords are going to be more lucrative uh, than others. So anyway, so that's another way that this tool can really come in handy and kind of help you once you do decide on your topic and once you get going. All right, so I hope this helps you just a little bit. And if you wouldn't mind leaving a comment down below, let me know what you're planning on blogging about, like what topics you're looking at, and I will comment back and uh, try to offer any advice I can if you have any questions. And if you enjoyed this video, if you found this helpful at all, I'd love it if you could leave us a thumbs up. And uh, you can also hit the subscribe button if you want to hear more like this as well. So that's all for today. Have a wonderful rest of your day. Adios.